Welcome back to John's Films. Today we have an interesting situation. We have Waffle Sports over on our Discord server. Waffle Sports has been trying to create a track for a base runner in baseball. So we use an MLB clip under fair use, using a very small portion of it, as well as not degrading it by any way. And so what we're doing here, we are going to track that base runner for Waffle Sports. So you'll see here he's trying to use a tracker. He finds the red channel, the green channel, and then he tries to track forward. But you'll notice he's not hitting actually the track forward button. So he's just hitting play. Um, would have to hit that button. But let's talk about how we would do that more simply. And then what we would do if it failed. I get a lot of questions on one of the tracking tutorials I've done. But what do I do now? It won't work. So let's take a look. Here we go. If we play back the footage, it's just a simple base runner sitting there. We probably want to put a label or something next to his head. So let's jump into Fusion. And we can use the tracker here. And what you'll see, I've got media in, and that's this footage here. So we'll put that over on the left. I'm going to hit shift and spacebar here in the node graph and type tracker or track. There we go. And that brought up my node selection panel and then gave me a tracker node attached to media in. That was because it was highlighted when I hit shift and space. I'll put the tracker node over on two so I can see it. Now, there's a few steps to go through here. Generally, the defaults work. I'm going to zoom back into my footage, get some place where there's a pretty good level of contrast between the base runner here and the background. Now, the background is just the dirt in the infield. That should work pretty well. And now I'm going to come up to the right and click track. You can notice, for the most part, that works pretty darn well. Um, and so you see the track data is superimposed over the footage here, and I can watch going back as the track node moves with the runner. There's a few points that are out of the way, and what I can do is come back in and drag those down in. I can also change the channel, and I can tell you by switching to the red channel, given the red background there, um, you get a lot more contrast, and that's kind of what you're looking for. So the more contrast you can drive out of use of these, the better. So that was the failure there on Waffle Sports part. Have to use the track forward or track backwards rather than clicking play down here in the playhead. But what if we didn't want to use a tracker? What if we just wanted to solve it good old-fashioned keyframe style? Well, if we were putting titles over the top of this person's head, we could just take the title and drop it on the timeline. So I'll do that. Grab the title, the text, pop it on the timeline, and there we go. So I've got a title sitting here, and what I really want to do is be able to stick it to this person. Now I could use a tracker and use a uh, match move and get it working like I've got in the other tutorial linked above. Or what I can do pretty simply is just, hey, take the title, make it say what I want, runner guy. And we will shrink it down a little bit because it's kind of big. There we go. And where I want it to show is, let's say, I'm going to start, here we are on our first clip, put it right under the person. There we go. I've got the text under him, and I know that's where I want it to start, and I'm going to try and maintain that distance between him and the text. So I'm going to mark the position with a keyframe here on the right-hand side of the panel. You can see the red diamond I've created. Now I'm going to forward through the footage until we get to where he makes a motion to turn around. So that'll be right here. All right, he's got his plant foot down. And now I want to recenter this under him. There we go. And now I'll forward again. Go forward until... Let's see where we are. All right, right here. Clearly we've zoomed in. And let's see. So I'm looking for a change of direction from him next. He's about the same consistent speed, which really helps us. No real change of direction. So I'll wait right here. And I'm going to transition this to be still under him. Now, it's moved around in the frame a bit. So let's try something. I'm going to change my playback, turn on my proxy to half resolution. Track-wise, uh, that shouldn't hurt us. We're using keyframes, so it doesn't really matter. Um, user will go to smart. And now I'm able to track forward. Let's see. So 
it's going to follow him, and I'm cashing it up real quick. You can see it's following him. It starts to separate from him because of the zoom in, but it's really not that bad of a track. It's not great, uh, and that's because he has a couple of stutters he makes in there. Let's see what we can do. What we'll do is we'll split the difference between the two and recenter this. And keyframing is really just the process of splitting the difference between two at all times. Let's see where that next keyframe is here at the end. Yeah, a little too far. So now when it starts to separate again a little bit too much from him, I'm going to pull that back to here and run it ahead and see where we've separated from him a little too much again. And run it ahead. And we'll go back just a touch to the left. Pull this forward. All right, so we should have a decent map here. Let's see what we get. We're churning this morning. Not sure what's uh, causing the playback to be so choppy. All right, goes back. And so that sticks to him pretty well. And we've got a track in place just by moving his position and keyframing it. Each time that we move it with the keyframe selected, we have a keyframe. Each time we move the position, it marks that position and says this is where you should be when it's at this point of the footage. One of the easiest ways to do it if you've got somebody moving in a consistent pattern straight across the screen would be do a keyframe at the end, do a key, uh, keyframe at the beginning, do a keyframe at the end, and then split the difference and see where it sits. If it sits okay, great. If not, adjust it a little bit. If that looks pretty good all the way out the end, but the beginning still doesn't look good, for instance, then split the difference between the midpoint and the beginning. Set that one. For instance, he's a little too close to it right there. There we go. And now it will continue to set it, and you continue that split the difference all the way down until you get a really good track. This one, though, looks like it was pretty easily soft with keyframes. And there we go. All right, thanks for watching John's Films. I appreciate it. If this has been helpful to you, be sure to click like and subscribe. If it's been really helpful to you, consider buying me a coffee over at Buy Me a Coffee. The link is below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.